Hopefully it works. What's up, guys? It's us at Game Blaster Alpha. We're starting a brand new game of Icewind Dale, the Forever Winter. We've got Woo! Patrick, we've got Tony, we've got Richard, and we've got Matt, the good one. Uh, and uh, I guess we're going to just jump right into it. Uh, so I'll start reading the cold open. Stop that song. Play a different one. Icewind Dale has become trapped in a perpetual winter. Ferocious blizzards make the mountain pass through the spine of the world exceedingly treacherous, and this land has not felt the warmth of the sun in over two years. In fact, the sun no longer appears above the mountains, not even in what should be the height of summer. In this frozen tundra, darkness and bitter cold reign as king and queen. Most Dale residents blame Arl the Frost Maiden, the god of winter's wrath. The shimmering aura that weaves across the sky each night is said to be her doing, a potent spell that keeps the sun at bay. Dale folk living, live in a scattering of settlements known as Ten Towns. The drop off in caravans coming from the south and travel between settlements in this never ending winter has left everyone feeling isolated. Although each town has resolved to appease the Frost Maiden with sacrifices of one kind or another, no respite from winter's fury seems forthcoming. For adventurers such as yourselves, Ten Towns is a place to test one's mettle, and in the spirit of heroes who have come before, leaves, leave one's mark on this frigid, blighted land. Our adventure begins in Bryn Shander. A walled, a walled town perched atop a cold, lonely, wind-lashed hill. Bright lanterns suspend over narrow streets, twist in the wind, and add flecks of color to the town's otherwise drab surroundings. The friendliness in this settlement has dwindled as of late. Arl's unyielding winter has greatly reduced the number of visitors to Bryn Shander, and local trade is suffering for it, eating away at the locals' sense of humor and goodwill. Still... There's no safer place in Icewind Dale to spend coin or spend the night. We find ourselves... Oh, let me switch to the map. Oh, don't play that song. We find ourselves at a small local cemetery within town. As of the last year, most bodies were getting buried outside the town walls. But in Stevie Ray Vaughn's case... Wait, no. <laughs> that's before I realized you changed the last name. Stevie Ray Charles's case, an exception had been made. He had been such a well-liked guy around town that a petition was filed to allow one more proper burial in the fancy cemetery. And so, within the cemetery people have begun to accumulate around Stevie's coffin and bow their heads. Michan, from the House of the Morning Lord, even agreed to come down and lead the ceremony. Tears are shed as a somber melody rings through the crisp winter air, emanating from the pan flute of a tabaxi flautist standing behind the crowd. Michan is looking over her notes at the northern end of the group. Thank you all for coming. We'll get started here in a moment. Let's allow another few minutes for people to arrive. Once we start, I'll say a few words and then allow anyone from the crowd to do so as well. As a testament of how far and wide Stevie Ray's friendship had reached, the crowd forming was a diverse mix of people, all shapes, sizes, and types represented. Standing next to the handcrafted coffin is a human. Kemet, if you'd like to introduce yourself and describe what you look like. So, Kemet looks like an average height, average build, like middle-aged gentleman, uh, it's, it's probably a younger middle-aged gentleman. He a, uh, looks a little hard as of living up in Ten Towns and hails from a city of, uh, of the town of Lonelywood. Yeah, he's bundled up, he's got his cloak, a black cloak kind of wrapped around him tightly, and you, you can kind of hear him 
uh, talking under his breath. Oh, I'll miss. I'll, I'll I'll miss Stevie. We had some good times together. No. Good times. Across from him stands an orc man. Mr. Slacks. Mr. Slacks is very tall. He's six foot ten. He's an imposing figure. He's wearing dirty, worn, aquamarine colored pants with uh, red, red threads down the outside seam where it looks like red buttons used to be sewn on. His jacket is a very dark red with gold trim. Looks like it was the victim of a poor attempt to dye it black, but the fabric didn't really take the dye, so now it's just a dingy dark red color instead of its original bright red. The gold thread didn't take the dye at all. Uh, someone looking for him might be able to recognize him, uh, just because it looks like there's, these are the remnants of a uniform. And uh, Slax is looking down at Stevie Ray's coffin and looking around and he's looking at the other people that are there, looking for a friendly face. Not sure if he sees one. Not sure if he trusts anybody. Mm. I mean, you catch... And uh, there's a dwarf woman who's, who's crying. Sorry, what else did you have? Yeah, um, that's about it. He's it's got uh, olive green skin, and oh, what color did I make his eyes? Uh, uh, brown eyes. Nice. And he's got uh, long black hair, pulled back into a single braid that goes down his back. He's got a shield on his back and a sword behind it, and a pair of axes hanging on his belt hand axes Fuck yeah. standing at the back of the crowd is another human Rizal if you'd like to introduce yourself sure Rizal um, looks about average height uh, you can see he's got a very strong build but wiry so he's not muscular or anything but he's uh, he's all muscle and no fat put it that way he's got uh, <laughs> long black hair that's got um a little bit of a graying in it. Not that he's, you know, old or anything. Probably place him around uh, late 20s, early 30s. He's just graying a little soon. Uh, skin looks like it's been weathered. Uh, just forged by by just horrible uh, cold weather. Mm. Stuff like that. Uh, eyes, copper, and uh, always squinted and kind of just looks focused all the time. Uh, he's not really very practical. Nothing he's wearing is fancy. Just cold weather gear, probably the cheapest you can get on the market, covering some kind of studded leather armor. And um, he's not looking around or anything. He's just very much focused on um, on his friend. Sure, his sure. deceased friend. Within the crowd, there's even a plasmoid man, Mungo. Um. Mungo just immediately starts wailing and weeping and throws himself on the on the coffin and he just screams We'll write the great story once we're together in heaven again ah! Um tears are like spraying out of him but he <laughs> has no Yeah yeah so he has no Form. Like, he, he is vaguely humanoid, but um, what you see is just, like, glue, like, little blobs of stuff, like, fly off of him in this exaggerated, cartoonish manner, and then they land and then form into little versions of him and quickly run back to his form, where they reabsorb into him. Um... And then, like, he, you know, so you can see him just, this little circle has formed around him of blobs falling off of him and then reforming uh, or turning into little versions of him and running back to him. Um, he, uh, you know, he, he composes himself, stands back up. Uh, I apologize. I, I loved him so much. <laughs> um, but as far as what he looks like, he, he just looks like a humanoid blob. Do there is no, he's not wearing any... Or you nope. just, you're just uh, blob shoot, okay. Yeah, I don't, I mean... Well, 
Let's let's say for the game he does because I think he has to. I don't think he's immune to cold. Yeah, you need the cold. Uh, you can't you can't see it. You like? If, can I do it. that? Can I do that in terms of because there's no like. Right now, I don't see a problem with it. Okay. Uh, if I, it comes up in the future, that's fine. We can talk about it. But yeah, I just like the idea that like, what, what am I going to do with clothes? I'm just an ooze man. Um. He doesn't wear any armor, so. Mm -hmm. Okay. Anyway, if it becomes an issue in the future, we can we can mm -hmm. definitely backtrack that. I mean, at the very that, least, I imagine no. that it's floating around in there, almost like any other ooze that gets shit caught in it. Maybe no. Well, maybe that's what happened. Well, the problem is then it doesn't function as a jacket because right. jackets right. don't generate their own heat. So unless, like, he is he doesn't generate heat. I don't. Yeah, I don't know. But my my vision is that he is not wearing any clothing. He is literally just a a blob. Um, right. If that makes people uncomfortable, we can definitely go back. If you if you want to say right now that he has to wear clothes, that is perfectly fine. I don't mind. That was just what I envisioned, and it doesn't have to be that way. I mean, the only reason I would say he has to wear clothes is just for the idea that it's like, how are you not freezing to death? But like. Maybe antifreeze. Address it later. Yeah, maybe you coat yourself in antifreeze or something. Uh -huh. Just some sort of weird equivalent of of uh, of cold weather clothes. Anyway, I mean, I could ch I could change one of my spells to like conjure flame and just have a flame inside of him all the time. Well, uh, it's not a big deal okay. now. We'll just move on and sure. do with it cool. later. All right, all right. We're going to begin the proceedings. Let us bow our heads and say a few words for the departed. Stevie Ray Charles was a good man. He cared for the people he loved and tried his best to help out whoever he could, whenever he could. It's not surprising that we have a number of loving faces in the crowd today. Stevie, as those closest to him would call him, was known to travel the Dale far and wide, making any acquaintances into immediate friends. He was quite possibly one of the best men in all of Ten Pounds, and we will all mourn his passing for years to come. But in moving on, we must focus on the good times instead of the loss. We must pass along the tales of Stevie Ray Charles and let him live on in our minds and hearts. For our focus and our intent and our beliefs and our faith are powerful things. And with them, we not only pay respect to our gods, but we can also help to immortalize and preserve our loved ones in the afterlife. We will miss him for the joy he cannot bring us any longer, but we should cherish the joy he hath already instilled and do our best to carry on as he would have. And in, it, and in this, he will stay with us and we will pass his spirit on to future generations. Gods bless you, Stevie Ray. Rest in peace. Would anyone like to say a few words? I understand if you don't. Rizal steps forward. Okay. And places a giant living, uh, giant green oak leaf on top of the casket. Uh, may the oak father guide your way to the next life. And then steps back. Thank you so much. Anyone else? Commit steps forward and just kind of knocks on the casket and he goes like, Stevie, appreciate what you've shown me. All the kindness. Had some good times and back and you may have chose the the better path than I did, but miss you. That's wonderful. Um, Mr. Oops, sorry, you want to go first? That doesn't matter. Richard, you made um, a noise Mungo's first. Gonna, you go. Mungo's going to step forward. He just, just, just still weeping. It's like, you're the best person I ever knew. Everyone else is garbage. They're trash! You're the only one worth a damn, and we're all doomed without you! Ah! <laughs> and I walk away. A number of the, of the funeral goers are all just nodding, and yeah, yeah he's right. But Tony, were you going to say something? <laughs> and Mr. Slacks leans forward, puts his hand in the middle of the coffin, and leans down, like right to the edge, like he's going to whisper to it, and he goes, Dude, what the fuck? I don't know what the fuck I'm going to do. Tell me, tell me you're going to pop out of here or some shit. Tell me this is a joke. Fucking A. And it backs up. <laughs> um, after you back up and leave the coffin, 
uh, the, this, the shorter uh, dwarf woman steps up. <laughs> I met old Stevie and Targos a year or so back, and, well, he, he could see I was in bad shape. I'd given up on everything, just waiting for them to draw my name in that damn lottery and show me out and do the cold. But, no, mm. Stevie was sweet. He was kind, and he really listened. And, well, maybe I was wrong, but he didn't interrupt or try to fix me. He just stayed with me and simply showed me that there was a better way. I owe my life to this man. I can't even imagine where I would be right now if it went for him. God bless you, Stevie. She covers her face. She tries to wipe the tears and she backs up into the crowd. Michan motions to a stronger man with gloves on and steps back up in front of the crowd as the man steps uh, to a contraption on the side of the coffin and begins to wind a crank that slowly lowers the coffin into the grave below. Thank you all very much for coming. There will be a reception at the North Look for anyone who'd like to attend. I'm told the honey wine is half off while well, they still have some. But the Icewind Ale is free of charge to anyone who mentions Stevie's name. Thank you, everyone. We'll see you at the North Look. And Miss Ann heads off the crowd begins to disperse what are you guys up to you guys headed to the north look uh, i so guess commit looks yeah go ahead looks around and see see if he can meet, make eye contact with anybody and, he, and i think he sees mr slacks kind of glancing around so he, he nods walks over to mr slacks and said hey you heading over there to grab a drink uh anything free Sounds like a good idea to me. Yeah, me too. That's so true. We should marry our sorrows in a fine ale. I'm sorry, oh, I, I was be. eavesdropping. It's what I do. They call me Mr. Slacks. Commit. I could use a stiff one myself. I go by Rizal. I'm the world-renowned Mungo Doofoot. I'm sure you've heard of me. I was once a halfling. Perhaps that might help ring a bell. Actually, Stevie I... did mention you once. Oh. Not, not the most wife. flattering tale. <laughs> Oops. Yeah, are you a writer? I think my wife reads some of your stuff. I have been known to write a few stories. I was once a well-known uh, <clears throat> newspaper uh, reporter in Waterdeep. Um, well-known, renowned, really, throughout Waterdeep and Baldur's Gate. Um, if you happen to have read some of my stuff, or your wife has, I, I, uh, I, I understand why you would be in awe of me. Um, and then he turns to... Um, Rizal, and he says, well, our dear friend, he did have a sense of humor, so I'm sure that whatever he said that was in any anything negative about me was most likely done in sarcastic uh, repartee. <clears throat> he did have a sense of humor. Can't deny that. I don't do much oh. reading. Shall Let's we? Go. Let's go get some mail. Oh, yeah. Well done. So you guys walk together, kind of follow the crowd across town up to the north edge of town. I'm not going to move your tokens, uh, but the north look is, I think it should be. Uh, I figured out how uh, Mungo keeps from freezing. He has a excessive amount of alcohol in his plasmoid body. <laughs> and alcohol has a lower freezing temperature. So, so, so you just have to drink it. so much alcohol to stay... I'm happy to work that in, but you're going to have to be buying alcohol all the time. Uh, well, that's no issue. I definitely won't have any money during this campaign. <laughs> <laughs> Not at first. All right, great. Uh, so yeah, It has know. no effect, though. I do want to clarify. It does no effect. He does not get drunk. Plasmoid apparently do not get uh, intoxicated. That's part of the lore? I'm just making it up. <laughs> okay. Sure. That's not to say you can't apply drunken effects to him if you wish, but mm -hmm. he does not. He cannot. No matter how much he drinks, it doesn't affect him. He denies it. 
<laughs> there you go. <laughs> He's always like this. How could you tell? <laughs> I recognize this place. Well, deja vu here. Right, we well. fought here in my dreams. I don't see it yet. <laughs> oh, is this where you guys last were last week? Yeah. Yeah, we just did a battle oh, nice. of the bar. Cool. And you were there, and you were there. <laughs> you, everyone was in my dream. This is so weird. And Toto too. <laughs> yeah. Cool. All right, hang on. I'm still stuck at ninety nine percent. Oh, loading? Yeah. The north look. Eh, give it a second. Oh. And sorcerers get pets. Can I get a, a minion? Uh, what are those things called? A familiar? Uh, It's just a... Sp Bell, I think you could probably learn this. I forget if it's for sorcerers, though. I, I, it's, I think you have to do magic initiate it, wizard, uh, if you want to get it. Uh, okay, cool. Mm. Still at 99%. I'm going to refresh the page. Oh, I hear music. Oh, I don't hear music. You don't hear the music? I, I got it. I'm refreshing. It might be a me thing. You might have to adjust the volume, the global volume. Yeah. Right, I'm just gonna drag you guys inside. Okay. Okay, I hear it. I I changed my own volume. Oh, it's so warm in here. Feels great. So let's have one for Stevie. And Kemet says it as he looks over to the bartender. For Stevie. For Stevie. Um, you guys are with For me. Stevie. I'm so sorry for you lost guys. These are on the house. You Icewind Ale or Honeymead? I'll take some ale. All right. Both. On the house. He starts pouring Are they out both the on the house? No, Honeymead's half off though. Well, we got some, although I heard that... Something's fucked up with the meter. <laughs> the meter. The metery. I don't know if something's fucked up, so I don't know if our next shipment's gonna come in. That's not my problem. Hmm? Give me a drink now. All right, all right. <laughs> Jeez. You're demanding for someone who's upset, who's just lost somebody. He starts slamming down mugs, filling them up. He just starts lining mugs across the bar uh, to start handing out the, the, the drinks to everyone coming from the funeral. Uh, the dwarf lady ends up grabbing one that's sitting at the, the far end of the bar. She just slams her fist in the bar. Fuckers! Um, it, it, I do want to respond to what the the um, bartender just said, though. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Mungo it, is very quick to forget that his friend died. He's <laughs> just goes, Sir, if you looked around, people are dying constantly. What is one more death in all of this? And then he takes his drink and just pours it all over his head and it just absorbs into his body. Customer's always right. Dude. Dude. <laughs> Mon Mungo is a fickle individual. Mm hmm. Rizal's kind of fascinated by Mungo. He's never seen anything like that. So I kind of move over. What matter of being are you? Can't say I'm familiar with your type. Well, like I said before, I was once a well-respected and loved writer. And, uh, um, uh, gosh, I keep forgetting the word. Uh, newspaper person. A reporter in Waterdeep. Now I am this. If I'm being honest, I'm not quite sure what I am. Yeah, I was speaking more specifically of your of your race. Uh, okay, so that actually is a great question, Alex. What? Can I just say that I am, as far as I know, the only one that looks like me? And, like, I have no idea what, what yeah. my race is. Sure. I'm not actually a plasmoid. No, it's a result... Sure, yeah, without saying too right. much, I, yeah, from your sure. perspective, totally. Okay, cool. So, uh, I have, I have no idea what I am. I'm, 
I am this. I can do things that I could never do before, and I look uh, as I do now. I hope to someday return to my beautiful halfling form, if I'm being completely honest. Huh. Interesting. And I go back to my, uh, my ale. Did you used to have a face? Um, yes, of course. Oh. Like all halflings. I, I don't know. Sorry, I'll stay out of it. A good question, I suppose. No, nope. I apologize. You are the one serving the drinks. I shouldn't be offending you. I shouldn't be buttoned in. No big deal. So, Comet looks around and tries to look to see if he can tell anything unusual about the lady sitting at the bar. The lady sitting at the bar is, like, overly upset. I mean, she was crying during the cemetery, but she's just, like, angry now. It's gone from, like, denial, and now we've shifted into anger uh, and resentment. Uh, she's just slamming her fist on the bar. She's kind of muttering to herself, fucking herself, fuck it. She's just muttering to herself. Uh, let me just read out this setup. It's not a lot of info, but just, just another gruesome day in Ten Towns. Howling wind, bitter cold, foul tempers, and snowdrifts big enough to bury a herd of moose. But today, the local tavern is abuzz with news about a recent killing. Before the murder, the only question on everyone's mind was, will summer ever return to Icewind Dale? Or will I be the next sacrifice? But now the question is, will I be the killer's next victim? Nothing breeds fear and paranoia like a murderer with no face. But yeah, this, this dwarf woman, she's just kind of muttering to herself, angry. She slams her fist every few seconds. Mr. Slacks walks right up to her. How did you know Stevie? Uh, I, he was... He was one, one of my best friends. I, I... I didn't want to find him like that. I, I don't know. What exactly happened? Well, he invited me over. He said he had a surprise. But when I got there, he was just dead in front of the fireplace. He was laying there. He was stabbed. Was there a murder weapon there? Not that I found, and the cops didn't, the guards didn't find anything either. Any tracks or anything? I'm not good at that kind of thing, but... I, I mean, you're on the right... You're asking the right questions. How did you know Stevie? Uh, he was going to help me get set up here when I arrived. Uh, I know him from a while back, uh, from having worked with him a little bit. And, uh, I'm just getting myself out of a sticky situation. And he said he was going to help me get my feet on the ground here. And now I don't know what I'm going to do. That sounds like him. I, I just... Whoever did this needs to pay. Stevie didn't deserve that kind of thing, you know? I mean, I swear to God, if I find out who did that, I'll, I'll tear him to shreds. I, I swear to God. I've spent some time getting people to pay for things they did that they shouldn't have done. Uh, really? I, I have a feeling I'd, I'd really be satisfied by tracking down whoever did this and making them pay. The commit kind of hears this and kind of kind of walks over uh, and says, you know, that sounds like a good di good idea. Oh, my God. I got to say, I wouldn't, marry you. I wouldn't be who I am today if I wasn't for Stevie. He was a big part of my life, and I'm ready to kill someone. <gasps> now, friends, before we get too deep into this, desire for revenge. I just want to remind you that should you ever seek revenge, you should begin by digging two graves. It may not behoove us to just go out and... Yeah, because we're going to tear him in half and throw his body in one hole and bury the, his head in the other. Right? Am I don't... 
I don't think That's... we, uh, I, I got your name, man. My name's Commit. Oh, Flynn. Flynn Trollbang. Hey, Trollbang? Trollbang. Bane. Bane. I bang trolls. <laughs> how many how do you like to say it? You know, I've banged a few trolls in my day, but oh, I can't. I Who has it? Who has it? I bet. These bones aren't what they used to be. <laughs> uh, don't make me laugh. This is a serious time. And what, what, hey, look, you're just, you don't even care about Stevie. I heard you before. Now, the things we say and the things we mean are not always the same. Hey, let's You're a have weird one, you little blobby guy. That's fair. Let's have one uh, cheers. Let's have one round and for for Stevie. Let's have another round here. Yeah. Here, here. This is to Stevie, everybody. Uh, the bartender. Scrams. Uh, Scramtex, another one. Or Stevie. Pours a whole line of drinks. Passes out the drinks. Everybody. She holds us up the mug to cheers. And you guys chug your drinks. To, to, to killing the motherfuckers that killed Stevie. To killing them motherfuckers. Uh, look, okay. I mean, it sounds like you're already gung ho to jump on board, but. And I'd be with you. You know, I'd be right along with you, but like I said, I'm old now. Nah. Look, how about I fund ya? I'll give you a hundred bucks. A hundred bucks. A hundred gold to the whole group if you guys can find who did this and bring them to justice. That's a fair rate. Alright, I mean, it'll help you in your investigations, right? I mean, I can't do anything Absolutely. else, but... Oh, fuck, that's more gold than I've ever seen. Yeah, I mean, you Man, have to you're... split it, and it's like 20, 20, 15 each? 25. I'm not the math kind of person, but I can give it to you. Well... Man, that's really nice of you. I mean, it's for Stevie. You know, I would never have guessed same. you weren't the math type. Really? So I kind of so commit. Kind of looks around. We're talking pretty loud over at the at the bar. So commit kind of looks around to see if it, anybody's giving them the eye or overtly listening to them. Give me a perception check. Ooh, the first roll. The first roll. Gonna set, Here we go. Let's go set the mood. We'll see what it is. Oh, hey. Whoa. All right. Oh, yeah. Hey. Wow. So you're glancing nice. around. I you're... think we can wrap this up right now. We just won. Yeah, you just found the bad <laughs> There <guy>. he is. <laughs> we won. Actually, it was Easy. the Frost Maiden who was doing it. and uh... <laughs> Helen's the Frost Maiden. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, okay, so you're, you're glancing around the crowd just to see if anyone's like, listening in maybe acting suspicious overhearing what you're talking about you don't necessarily see any of that but the thing that kind of catches your eye you look across the room and you you meet gazes with this older woman sitting in the back back corner uh down here um she's writing in a notebook she's just sitting there uh white hair she's got a, an eye patch on one eye big thick coat she, see, she sees you. She's been looking at you guys, but she looks down. She continues writing in her notebook. She's, she doesn't look suspicious. She doesn't look like she's scared or anything, but she was looking at you. So, uh, so I, we all tackle her. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> so I turn around, grab it, grab an extra one of the ales from the bar and walk over to her table and say, ma'am, may I sit down? I brought you, brought you an ale. thought we'd Take a cheers for Stevie. Who? Stevie, I'm, I'm assuming you're here because you've, uh, cause of the funeral. Oh, no, no, I saw a bunch of you guys come in. No, I'm not with the funeral, but I'll accept a drink if, if you're offering. Yeah, here you go. You might, mind if I take a seat real quick? Sure, sure. What's going on? Oh, well, you know, we had a good friend just die. Murdered, actually. Oh, yeah. Yeah, Stevie the, the Bard. Yeah. Good guy, good guy. But but um, I don't mean to be such a downer, but, you know, what what brings you here? 
Uh, me? Uh, eh, me and some comrades. Eh, work acquaintances. Eh, we came out here. Uh, well, I'm at the bar right now. Oh, oh are, are you are you from Tin Towns or are you visiting? No, no, we're, we're in from, uh, fuck, where is this from? Pretty sure I came from from Luskin. Luskin, ah, I spend some time in Luskin now and then, making, let's say, merchant runs back and forth. Oh, okay, well, maybe, well, I don't recognize you, but you know the area. Well, it's good to, to meet somebody from hometown. What What brings you all the way out here? Oh, uh, well, my, my home base is Ten Towns, uh, is uh, Lonely Wood. I just like to help people from Luskin and here get hard-to-find material, you know, specific stuff every now and then. Uh, you could say I work in import-export. Really? Hmm. So what do you, what, what do you and your comrades do? Uh, I don't need to... It's a lot of different stuff. I mean, we just we're just in the area looking at looking for the cool <laughs> cool stuff, you know. Um, I mean, right now I'm trying to figure out if there's a way to affect this freaking winter. Uh, I've got a hunch that there's these creatures that might be tied into the weather. So I mean, currently I'm researching that. I haven't found any though. Have you seen any, like this big little little person about this big? You know, uh, maybe. Hold, l let me ask my friends. Hold on. I commit turns over and kind of waves at everybody to come out of here. We'll, we'll ask over. them. Gentlemen, this yeah. is um, ma'am. I, I sorry, I, I missed your name. What is your name again? Uh, Valin. Valin. This is Valin. She uh. She's in from Luskin. Uh, I think she she wanted to ask a couple questions from us if we've seen anything. Oh, I was just yeah, I was just asking him. I, I mean, I'm looking for they're called Chwinga. The little elemental beings. They're very tiny. Look like little people with masks on. I've been trying Chwinga? to track one down. Chwinga. 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 Yeah, that's right. Like with a ch. Yeah, with or a, with a sh. With a ch. Okay. Yeah, hard sounds to make if you're a kindergartner, by the way. Trying to trying to learn those sounds. That's rough. Ch, sh. It's hard. Mm -hmm. That's Richard's elementary school fact for the day. <laughs> oh, I'll have some of those soon. I did. Today was my first day teaching second grade. Well, get setting up my classroom. I I went back to teaching. What? Yep. Sorry. Ooh. Wow. Oh. Two teachers yeah. now. No wonder. I was wondering. I was like, Tony looks cooler today than. Uh, <laughs> He's wearing his. No, I messed up my beard. Batman shirt. I shaved. I shaved the connectors, uh, and I have a mustache today. I, I messed. I messed wow. up in shaving. Oh no. I want to ask more questions, but now's not the time. <laughs> yeah. Um. After. I am so 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 curious. Um. Cool. Uh. Uh. uh yeah. Okay, that's all I got. I guess she just reaches just down below the table and pulls out this like lantern and sits it up there. It's not lit. This thing's supposed to track them down, but either this it's broke or there's none in town. Yeah, it's definitely not in town, ma'am. What kind of creature could live in this? Look at this filth and rabble. Could we borrow There's it and walk around with it? People. <laughs> oh, you looking to help? Sure. We'd have to leave town. You want to go beyond the walls? Well, not tonight, but yeah. Hmm. Tonight, tomorrow, the sun never comes up. It's night all the time. You know, ma'am, from we wouldn't. We've got a couple things we need to do, but we wouldn't mind helping a fellow person from Luskin. You know. Hmm. Okay. All right. Well, shoot. I appreciate that. Okay. Um. Is there anything you can give me as collateral in case you don't come back with the lantern? Hmm. I'm gonna just. Mm, nope. Okay. Never mind. Ma'am, have you looked at my friends here? Look at them. 
This one's burly. That one's burly. This one... Well... And he points at Rizzle. He says, Are you burly? I can't quite... You don't look burly. Uh, I would not consider myself burly. What is going on here? What, what is this what? meant to prove? To... You're strong. Not... I get it. I take out I take out a little bell and I ring it. Ding, ding. Hmm. Ma'am, this, this might seem like a normal bell to you. Mm-hmm. But my daughter made this for me. <laughs> and I wouldn't leave. I wouldn't leave this with just anybody. I wasn't going to come back and get it because she would have my hide if I had lost this on my when I was going out. Can I take an insight check on on him? I'm just curious, you know, just because I want to know if he's pulled the shit or not. <laughs> sure, sure. Roll an insight. You're going to roll contested? Uh, well, I mean, if Patrick can tell us. Go ahead, contest that. <laughs> yeah, do you want to roll a deception? Or is this all true? Uh, the, 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 my daughter did not give me the bell, so I can <laughs> okay. roll a deception to see. <laughs> <laughs> this will be an ongoing secret you keep from resolving oh, the whole campaign. Yeah. The last oh, one. Oh, my oh, God. Damn. That, 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 <laughs> but you believe it is a bell from my daughter. Yeah. <laughs> this guy is as honest as they come. I like him. Yeah. <laughs> I like the cut I'm of the actually like you. Man, that's I want to get in on this game, point. too. Nice job. Are you want to see if he's too. lying? Okay. No, no, I just can't roll that high. My insight is sharp. No one fools me. He's a good guy. He doesn't lie. <laughs> oh, man. I'm an honest I don't rogue. pick up on anything. Um. I don't care. Can't, just uh, <laughs> can it, give me, just give me a persuasion. She's not sold on that being valuable to her, but... Uh, We'll see. Okay. I'll tell you what. You can keep the bell. You can take the lantern. But I want updates. I mean, are you heading out? Of, you're not heading out of time soon. Just let me know where you're going. Where do we find you? I mean, I guess I'm here for now. Bring Shanda, got this is room upstairs. This is one That's of the easy. better establishments. Yeah. I think so. We've got a lot of choices. I mean, Geldenstags is pretty good, but... Eh, oh, yeah. Whatever, I already got a room here. Well, I really appreciate that, you guys. Um, Look, we're trying to track down the Twinger. If you can... If you can't bring me one back, then maybe just do some research and see what you can find out about. Preferably, I'd like to do some experiments, but... How do we catch it? Do we just put it in a bag? I haven't got to that yet. Yeah, I'm not sure. Okay. I haven't found one. Oh. You know. hey, we can't, like, jam it in the lantern? If you can Does get it need to be it, alive? Uh, preferably, yeah. yeah. Hmm? Hold, please. Ma'am. Yes, Form of experiments do you wish to do on these creatures? Ah. Uh. I mean, I'm just trying to get to the bottom of how they control the weather. I'm trying to bring the summer back. You know what I mean? I just, I'm not. Are you going to harm gonna them? Take, but uh, just like Mars. No. No, I'm not going to. I'm not going to harm them. <laughs> hmm. I, I believe her. I want to do an inside check on that. All right. I'm, I roll shitty, so can I have like advantage or something? Just because you roll shitty. Huh. <laughs> that seems like a reason. Hey, all right, 21. Wow. Is she, I just want to know if she's going to hurt them or not. Like that uh, part in particular. Look, she's lying, but not because she's intent on hurting them, but uh, she doesn't cool. mark that off. You know, that's not off the table for her. Okay. I'm going to uh, grab the lantern. And think, Thank you, ma'am. We will... Certainly go on this quest for you. Thank you. Thank you. Well, again, appreciate it, uh, but I've got <laughs> I've got so much to do. Got some more notes to take. Um, and I guess you're raring to go <laughs> cry or something, right? So. Oh, yeah. Yeah. So, guys, 
y'all y'all want to potentially have another drink or maybe we go check out uh stevie's house that sounds like what i want to do mungo stores the lantern in his body just bloop right inside i was gonna Rizal ask where you're gonna put that thing Rizal's just <laughs> fascinated <laughs> You can just see it floating around in there. Dude, is that going to get all slimy in there? Oh, no. Okay. I can control every part of me, and I just drop off an arm, and then it just reforms back into my body quickly. Exactly how much stuff can you hold in there? Uh, You know, normal humanoid of medium sizes amount. Yeah, the, oh. the normal amount of loot that one holds in their stomach. You... you, you yeah, you can see like there's a dagger, a couple daggers floating around in there. There's a light hammer. There's a news or a, a, a little notebook journal. Um, there's some torches, rations, a water skin. I, I have to ask, where do you pee from? Hmm. Um, anywhere I want, actually. Oh, okay. <laughs> now that's interesting. That's definitely interesting. Oh, I want to take a look at what she was writing in her notebook. Can I see? <laughs> uh, yeah, sure. First, I'd like to comment that it sounds like Mungo's body is like the equivalent of like a lady's bra where they just shove their stuff in. <laughs> you know? uh. Uh, okay, so you're going to try to peek at her notebook. All right. Give me a... Give oh. me a stealth check to sneaky... Hold on. What? Uh, no, I can't do anything. Never mind. Can't help him. Uh, stealth, stealth, Should I play a bard? Should I be a bard? Hmm. Too late. Well, I mean, I guess you haven't utilized any of your skills, so you probably you could technically change it. But oh no! I have disadvantage on stealth. Okay. Well, very good. So you lean in, immediately start making clanking noises, and she looks up uh, and tries to hide it. Give me a perception check. Versus how quick she can yank the book away. A 10. Versus a 20. Unfortunately, she's able to cover it up. Pull it close to her chest. Excuse me. What are you me? writing there? It's my diary. Oh, I'm sorry. I didn't know it was a diary. Yeah. Most people don't bring their diaries out in public. She wants... But I'm not most people. Did you write anything about me in there? <laughs> I'm going to now. Make it good. Dear diary, this guy tried to steal you today. <laughs> yeah, that's rude. Do you have no... <sighs> no, no. Don't be rude, Vahim. I apologize for my friend, ma'am. He is... um, And I lean in. Quite uncouth, if I may say so. I could be couth if I want. Oh, yeah? Well, you should try. You should try to be a... Lady, it's been a long day. We've we've had a great loss, and we all have a couple drinks. Excuse, excuse him, please. Uh, I understand. I understand. No worries. Thank you for your help, but this is my private book. I will catch you guys later. Fine. Cool. Sorry. She goes back to her book. Although she doesn't pull it down yet. She's just waiting for you guys to walk away. Um, yep, we do that. We walk away. So Do any of us know one? where um, Stevie lived? Uh, commit would. I would say Resolve would as well. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I'm, sh yeah, I'm sure most of you would. Okay. This and then on, on on the on the way out, commits just kind of glancing over it at this awesome graphic of the notice board to see if there's anything that catches his eye on there. Mmm. Okay. All right. Let's see. Let's see what there is. Um. Wait. How did you know that was a notice board? Zoom in on it. You can see it says a notice board at the top. Oh. That's wow. Funny. Oh, that's pretty cool. Someday yeah, it is. Art awesome. Real life perception. <laughs> but I just didn't even know. But I love it. All right, let's figure this out. You're looking at the notice board. 
Let's roll a well, Sometimes there's clues on these things. Uh, there's there's like two two different pieces of parchment uh, nailed up. Excuse me. Um, one of them is looking for a group of adventurers. Uh, or no, sorry. Uh, they're looking for a guide to lead them up the mountain, Kelvin's Cairn. They're trying to find something called Oya Minartok. And they're looking for a guide to lead them up the mountain. The second one uh, is something happening in Kaer Dinaval. Okay, it's not even a mission. It's just someone who's written on a piece of paper like, Hey, has anybody heard from Speaker Cranock lately? And no one's written on it but that's just a question there Alex yes can I change one of my spells I misclicked I meant to click message and ha instead took mending <laughs> gotcha yeah um, look, if you they are a... next to each other on the list so I just wanted to for this check first in with you session right. and even possibly into the second one if you haven't used it you can swap it but we should try to lock them in by at least next sure. session. Yeah. Okay. Hey, Commit kind of sees that, kind of glances at him, nods, and starts walking out. Can I be an elf wizard? I, I made a mistake. No, Get out of here. <laughs> uh, uh, uh. <laughs> All right. So what you guys do? You guys are leaving the bar and heading over to where he lived. Yes. Uh, right. Great. That's cool. Let's just say this house over here is where he lived. Uh, up, up, up. Yeah, I'm gonna put you guys together and then drag you guys over to it. Boom. Yes. Um, as we go, uh, once we are out of the inn, I say to the group, um, I will not be allowing us to capture those creatures and bring them to her. Um. Yeah. What if we catch one oh, yeah. and it's an asshole? Then it gets to be a free asshole. Just like the rest of us. It just nods and doesn't give them um, much, they felt much mind. I am interested in discovering what these creatures are. If they are, as she says, controlling the weather. That would be interesting. But uh, I don't think it's right to Put any sort of creature under her care. I do not feel like she will treat it with respect. So as as Mungo saying this, commits kind of listening at the door and then gently tapping the knob to see if it's unlocked. It seems to be locked. Uh, so I look around to make sure no one is in sight. seem to be some people around here so we might have to go around the back yeah just g uh, give me a perception roll real quick guys Those come guys. stand around he stand around Kimmet. wow and someone's Andrew. rolling real good tonight yeah okay uh yeah you know these people are walking by so they're not just standing around the house but you do spot one person who can kind of see you uh, they're hanging out by the front of the bar, slightly a bit away, so they may be able to spot you if you go through the front door. Uh, they're not paying full attention, though, so if you stealth, you may be able to get past them. But there is someone within eyeshot. Okay, so I say, hey guys, let's 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 go around the back. Uh, I'm not going to, mm, oh, I figured out the problem with what I'm suggesting now, because technically I could just squeeze, squeeze myself through a keyhole, but I am storing large quantities of things in my body. Mm. So Here, commit, does this, commit, does this building have a back? Yeah, so commit touches the window and sees if it's 
able to be opened or not? Uh, it's locked, but you could probably pick it. Okay, so I don't, I don't see anybody. Mungo, you pass by a door going around the other side. Oh, there's a door on the other side, gentlemen. Shall we try that? Seems like a bit of a quieter alley. This small, oh yeah, right here. So I quickly look around, don't see anybody, nail down, listen, and bring out the, the lock picks to open the door. All right. All right, so yes. we'll do, go to attributes, and we'll do, oh wait, you don't have lock picks. I got thieves tools. Oh yeah, duh. That's well, how did yep. I overlook that? I'm looking for L. Yeah. 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 <laughs> click, click the thieves tools uh, under your tool proficiencies, and that should roll. So wait, I see. Do I see? I see him breaking out a tool kit, like a thieves kit. Yeah. Okay. I'm not. I'm not trying to hide it. Well, when I see him do that, I place my hand on his shoulder. Um, and I say no. Nope, nope. his I hand, see. and I cast guidance on him. Oh, okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, oh, you don't look like you need it, but <laughs> ah, thanks, thanks. Fuck yeah! Uh, Have you rolled under a seventeen? <laughs> like five I rolls know. all He's doing like so man, good. I want that luck. I Let's am not resetting my browser. Quick. I'm not yeah. resetting my browser. <laughs> well, if it's a really, really hard lock, you have an extra D4. Yeah, I think it's extra D4. Okay. Uh, okay, well, yeah, uh, I don't think you need it. It definitely, you get it real quick. Um, it pops open, the door is unlocked, gain you access, the door swings open to a dark house. Yeah, I say, hey, everybody, come in. I immediately sit in the chair. I turn off all mm, the Comfortable. You know, our dear departed friend and I spent many a day sitting here in this room. Hey, somebody shut the door. <laughs> You're reminiscing. I got the room. it. Uh, yeah, it's, it's just the back library portion. A couple of bookshelves uh, and, and a podium where a book is open to. So I, I can be like, hey, I, if y'all want me to, y'all can come on. But I'll go ahead and check things out to make sure that nobody's here. Mungo's going to go read. So hey, I'm Mungo. trying to quietly walk around and look around. Mungo, yes, I, don't see, I, don't see any, uh, I don't see any books here by you. I'm going to stay with Kemet. You mentioned a bookshelf, right? Yeah, there's, oh, was there, there's something a bookcase. There's, there's an open book. An open book on that podium oh, there, yeah. Yeah, I'm looking at that open book. Okay. All right. All right, were you... Uh, maybe I misunderstood, Rizal. Rizal? 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 Rizal. 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 Did I misunderstand what you were trying to say? No, I just... You said you were a great author, right? Oh, yes. But I wrote maybe mainly newspapers. I, I have not dabbled in the... Ah, okay. I was just looking yeah, for I prefer... you. Yeah, I prefer... Couldn't help uh, that I no. noticed none of it on this bookshelf. <laughs> well, you wouldn't, but uh, I do appreciate the fact that you're thinking of me. Thank you. Of course. So, com com Commit looks over here and wonders: Is this is this normally in? Would he, is this something I'm used to seeing in here? The blood over the cot. Uh. I mean, I guess no, but I think this is just one of those things where I picked this house and now it turns out there's blood okay. somewhere. Uh, let's ignore <laughs> that part. Okay. Well, I mean, that could be where he was st stabbed. But no, so the, there's, uh, there's not like bloody clues over there per se. Uh, but yeah, I mean, you can see the bloody spot in front of the fireplace where they found his body and the, the, the blood pooled up. Okay, so I'm... Uh... So I motion back for everybody. Hey guys, it looks like it looks like it's clear, and um, I just start making my rounds of the room, looking for anything out of place or anything easily pilferable that I could uh, pocket for money later. Mm, okay. All right. Give me a second. Let me think about what Mungo reads in this fucking book back here. Um, what could you read in a book that's in this back back room? 
Oh, sorry. You, it, it could be nothing. Like, I don't need you to make no. up some no, I should make elaborate up little thing. Just for... I should make up something. We were trying to... Sure. We were investigating causes of the... Of the, uh, you know, the darkness here. That was our... My connection with uh, our friend, whose name I just keep forgetting, so I'm just going to call him our friend. Mm -hmm. Stevie Ray. Stevie Ray. I like to imagine with I'll a forget dash, that, like Billy you. Bob or something. Stevie Ray. Yeah. You read a section. It's a... It's an old book, and it's talking about... I don't know. I guess it's just a book about uh, get-rich-quick schemes or, like, ways to raise money fast. Oh, dear. Not the biggest thing, but... Stevie, Stevie Ray was, uh, he was a brilliant man, but loved to try and... Good old Stevie. Pull, pull one over on others. <laughs> uh, what was happening up at the... It's straight with me. So now, uh, now after I said the coast is clear, I'm walking around trying to see if there's number one anything to pocket that might be worth something. Number number two, just a um, anything that looks out of the ordinary that could be a clue or kind of what Stevie was doing right before he died. Okay, give me an investigation check. Well, you're not finding anything valuable per se. I mean, maybe some of these books, but you're not sure which ones. Um, I mean, you walk over by the fireplace and you kind of inspect the, the blood stains on the ground. You're not quite sure what any of that means. Um, shoot, with a six, it's just you're coming up kind of empty. You're looking around the room, looking for some sort of evidence of what happened here. But you're not finding anything. Yeah, guys, I'm I'm all tapped out. I, I can't see anything in here. I'm going to look in the other room. Y'all can look around in here. I'm going to check in the fireplace and see if there's any burned, like partially burned pages or anything like that. Hmm. Okay. Yeah, give me a, give me an investigation check. You're like digging around in the soot. Okay, you do find some pieces of burnt paper, but the message has been burnt off. Anybody know how to fix this so we can see what it said? <laughs> oh, no. Sorry, go ahead. I could have before I said I wanted to I, change my spell to. That's what I was laughing about. <laughs> I know. <laughs> that's oh, well. Nope. Nope. That's that's a, uh, I think yeah. I think rules as written it actually like if you repair something that was burned it repairs the page but it doesn't repair yeah. what was written on it anyway. Yeah. Is that true? Um, I feel like I've read things where it re, where it fixes the book. Or maybe I know in, specifics in, on like an adventure I read or something. Maybe. It's okay. Well, I, we I know What were you going to say? Yeah. Uh and I know that um in uh, Critical Role, the Mighty Nine, they had a map, and they tried to re repair the map, and it just repaired the paper, but it didn't repair the, the information. That makes sense. And they had looked up, they had done the research to see if it would work. Like, that was a question that Matt had to look up, so. Oh, interesting. I figure. Okay. All right, well. Rules is written. Yeah. I'm going to check this door out over here. Oh, okay. is it locked? Uh, it is locked. Well, it's it's locked, but from the inside, it's the front door essentially. You unlock oh. it. You can swing. It. You can swing it open. If I'll, you want. I'll I'll lock it again. Actually. All right. Um. Well, friends, like in all good homes, the most valuable things are upstairs. So we make our way up there. Sounds good. Kemet was. I'll check first just to make sure there's nobody up there. Of the main family just... room area, you find just a workshop and slash kitchen area nothing 